Before we get to this video, it's super important that if you like listening to the Automate Construction Podcast, you subscribe to the new YouTube channel at the link in the description. I have to move the podcast episodes there because it's not good for the algorithm to have long form and short form content within one channel. Also available on Spotify and other platforms. I'm here in Los Angeles, California at RIC Technology and we're going to take a look at their unique concrete printer and even see a live print in action today. Hi, I'm Kai. I'm CEO from RIC. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to demonstrate our 3D printing machine uh, for the a wall printing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually it's a simple plan. We need some place to storage our sand. Can give us less trouble for the dust. Hi, Z here, uh, founder of RIC. And then today we're going to showcase some of the printing features of our 3D printing uh, system, which is one of the most affordable. Uh, it includes the, our pump and mixer unit, and then also the track system, and the robotic arm. So usually before we start printing, we want the water to run through the system to get it moist, uh, not taking water away from the concrete. From here, you can basically see the whole process. They've got the generator here providing 440 to the mixer pump system, which is really unique to uh, RIC. And that feeds the material to their printer over there. To get it started, they run just water through it, which gets it lubricated and make sure all the systems are working together before they start running the concrete through. We'll see that happen in a minute. Uh, now I need to do a calibration. This custom mixer system also features a lift that can assist with loading. Their robotic arm system is unlike the others that we've seen. It's not the first on a track, but the piece on the extruder head allows it to have a much larger radius that it can print with. So we got some special design for the uh, for the shaft. During the develop, we found a lot of problems, especially in America. The cement is quite different with China. We spent maybe uh, three, four months just for the material development. The, the cement in America is more sticky and is actually catching on the side of the extruder. Uh, that's require a like a completely different design compared with China. Uh, so we made this improvement actually in a really short time, maybe one and a half weeks. So we made a new shaft come out and fix the problem. The goal for our development is just for user friendly and uh, we try to make everything modular. Just as you can see the extension here, uh, right now the way we install it is the maximum extent. But uh, on different situations, sometimes it have to be higher and sometimes the extruder can install inside of the extension rack. So the, the whole thing is uh, have a, it's actually a really simple design, but it's more effective. We can simply change the, uh, change the position of the printing. We choose KUKA robot. It's a maturity uh, factory. It's a maturity equipment and uh, it's cheap. Actually, it's cheaper than you develop the whole new gantry system, for example. And uh, also, as you can see, KUKA have a very heavy duty and uh, uh, user-friendly, like a uh, yeah, smart pad. And that means we don't have to spend more effort to develop a completely new uh, controlling system. That means more cost for the customers. Yeah, so you're not gonna pay a extra <laughs> interface just uh, for same function. Yeah. This machine can make us have more consistency uh, for the material mixing since uh, all the uh, additive and uh, and the water add is controlled by the computer and also the interface is user friendly. So there's only buttons so you don't have to learn the whole like uh, iPad system something again. Um, like as you can see uh, our material, this material is developed for uh, making the wall. Uh, 
so this one actually have more flowability and uh, cheaper price. Uh, we actually have different concept uh, compared with other company about the materials. Uh, in the beginning, we actually made a special material for making the the tooth print, uh, some like a, like a heart shape. But later on, we figured out, you know, for the construction, we actually need to more effort to figure out how to do a big project to replace the uh, traditional construction method. Because uh, right now, its material is the most big barrier for we commercializing the whole system. Um, we actually uh, found a lot of. Uh, we actually have a lot of achievement for lower the uh, lower the budget of the uh, of the material, uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we are not reducing the strength and also the quality of the material. Now they're going to start a print. They're running liquid through the system to make sure it's well lubricated. This helps to prevent a clogging situation. And if you look closely at the hose, you can actually see the concrete going up through because this hose is kind of transparent, which is a pretty cool feature. Concrete is very heavy, so there's usually a lot of pressure in these hoses. There's also a very secure connection to the extruder head system, which features an auger to keep the material agitated right before it's extruded. This auger and the rotor stator system can get aggregates stuck inside which leads to the screeching noise that you'll hear now. This doesn't affect the quality of the prints and changes based on the type of aggregate you're using. When everything's going smoothly, it gets kind of boring, which is a good thing. I'm always working on different camera angles and such, but the team that's printing has done so much printing it's lost its novelty to them. If words like mixer, pump system, and rotor stator don't make any sense to you, you should check out my course How to 3D Print a House on my website or at the link in the description. It's a four hour course that I developed to help people get an introduction to all the moving parts on a 3D printed construction site so that they can better assess which system might be best for them. There's also a course member community forum where some of the course members have contributed lots of valuable information and insights. More sections and community based features will be coming soon. The price is constantly going up as we add new features, but it's not a monthly charge and your one time payment will give you lifetime access. When the course is complete, it's going to cost over $1,000 with many different sections. All of that will be available to you at a 60% off price now for the beta version. It's actually even more than 60% off for the rest of this week only. Notice not all the companies in my videos are brave enough to print in person. Doing a live print is challenging because it requires in the moment impromptu adaptability and to have me here, they don't want anything to go bad so a lot of companies are too afraid to actually do a live print. You should always take note of the companies willing to do live prints because they're actually competent with their technology. You know this pad? This whole controlling system is super safe. It's how the it's how the Kuka developing the industrial use equipment. It's, uh, there's a lot of safety triggers, emergency stop. All the processing require a professional way to deal with it. So it's a maximum uh, optimized the safety. We did a very successful print and now maybe the most important part of the job is the cleanup process so that they can use all this equipment again successfully the next time. Everything needs to get all of the concrete off so it doesn't permanently harden within the hose on the extruder. With the robotic arm system there's much less of a dismantling process than a gantry system. So the cleanup process is usually pretty simple. Yeah, it's just about getting all the dirty stuff, putting water in it, just pump it out. And that's it. If anybody likes the printer, like the price pro we at, check us out at ricktechnology.com. That's R-I-C technology.com. We do leasing, we do sales, we do collaboration. We also develop material with you. Uh, basically, we do a full service 3D printing service. There's another really important, uh, it's actually supported by a, 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 like a Chinese Asian power. Like the, 
concrete god. Yeah. The most important thing had to be respect and worship to the concrete god. So all the prints are gonna be success. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> this print is one meter tall, and unlike some of the other mixes, it's all the same color. So it's not really curing at a vastly different rate. Uh, and the top you can feel is pretty solid at this point. The bottom is almost rock solid. So I would say within uh, an hour or so, this is solid. And how long before you can move it? A sprint like this size might be able to be moved within two and a half hours. The longer and thicker uh, the concrete sections are, the more time it needs for the water to uh, evaporate and for the system to become strong enough to be moved. A huge benefit to the track system is you can print one object here and then move down the track, print the next object. So you can have a factory pumping these systems out one after the other. You don't have to wait for each one to completely cure. This company has printers available for rent, for Sale, you can check out their website at the link in the description. I also did a podcast episode with their founder Z that will be available on YouTube, Spotify, all the podcast networks, so keep an eye out for that as well. So this is a smaller version of the print we just did. As you can see here, this is all cantilevering here. And then this is about after a week. And then the strength, like that's something normal concrete is really lack on, which is you can't really cantilever out. Uh, with our material, since we have a lot of fiber inside of it, it well, this is kind of still strong. And then, let me show you some. Oh, yeah, this is uh, another bigger planter that we are actually turning into a fireplace. Because wow. uh, all of this is printed in one continuous go. As you can see, everything, you know, is uh, cantilevering and waving. And that's uh, one of our uh, high strength uh, materials. And here we have some recent data. So that's our high strength. This is only two weeks. It's reaching 8,300 PSI. And then, this is the uh, material that we just printed. This is also a two week break. It's 75, so 100 PSI. This material and that material here is our, this one is our higher strength, which allows us to do really cantilever and stuff. And then you can get wavy curves and then a lot smoother finish. Mm -hmm. Obviously it costs a little bit more, but it's still relatively cheap compared to it. And then over here, this is the material we just printed. This has been a week and then it's rock solid. If you can see. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then with this is that there is less consistency than that one and then you also have less of a perfect surface but overall good enough for building material as well. There's where we just recorded the podcast on all the 3D printed furniture. And then we are horrible at raising plants, not as good as doing concrete so all that is that. Has great material. But even though these are both called SE40, SE30s, but they're from different quarries. These have a little bigger aggregates. We tried it out, we can print it, it just ruins the pump a little faster. So we decided we're gonna stick with the finer one. I mean, it costs the same. And then obviously, as you see, strength wise, it doesn't really matter for us. We have our RGB sheet. And one of the major components of material costs come from sand and cement. That's why we use the cheapest sand and then the most common cement we could find. And that gives us a really good opportunity to lower the cost down to an affordable level and then make projects make sense. If you've enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos of automated construction technologies. We have over 100,000 followers on both TikTok and Instagram and regularly get over a million views on videos there. So maybe check out some of those platforms as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.